So, as we're moving into the word of the Lord, um, we're going to talk about victory again. I told my wife, I said, we literally can talk about victory all summer long. We can talk about victory all year long because there's just so many areas. Um, and one of the aspects of victory that I felt like, man, God's just been kind of like pinning my heart with is failure. Ooh, it's a, it's a hurtful one, right? Failure. And so you can have victory and failure. Do you know that? Yeah. Say this with me. Say, I can have victory, I can have victory. in my failure. In my failure. <laughs> and so if you were to look up the word, so that's the title of this message, victory and failure. If you were to look up the word failure in the dictionary, you're going to get something that looks a little bit like this. Uh, it would say something like an act or instant of failing or proving unsuccessful, lack of success, non-performance, of something required or expected. Maybe that's the part where, you know, failure hurts is when there's an ex expectation and you fail to miss that, right? Insufficiency. And then I always love to go back to the Noah Webster 1828 dictionary. I feel like back then they just had a better way of, of explaining words. Their vocabulary was a little bit better. Okay. And so these are, so this is what the Noah Webster 1828, and, and he had like, a whole page of like what it was. So I took little bits and pieces of all of his points and just kind of added more to what you would see. It's to be uh, deficient or wanting, right? You're, a, you're in want. To miss, to omit or neglect, to fall short. I mean, that's what sin is, right? Sin is falling short, right? It's failure. To fall short. To desert, to disappoint, right? Man, how many times have you disappointed someone? Ooh, right? To seize, to perish, or to be lost. So he just adds more to that. When you hear that word failure, these are just words that kind of bring in a description of what that word means. And so it means, again, you know, when we miss it, when we mess up. And I love the scriptures. How many of us in here love the word of the Lord? I love that the word of the Lord is real. It's authentic. It's very, uh, it shows men and women and people who are regular and they make mistakes and they make and they show that it isn't just it isn't just the highlight rail like Facebook or you're seeing all the highlights of somebody's life. No, man, you get right into the life of David. You get right into his failures, right? You get right into the life of Peter. You get right into where he's walking with Jesus and then he's denying him. You know, I mean, I mean, so I love the fact that the scripture doesn't omit that there's failure, that we make mistakes, that we fall. Say failure. Failure, failure right? And so you think of somebody, and so like, I, I, that's why I love Peter. He's one of my favorites because you see him at his best and you see him at his worst. You know, at his best, he's like, Lord, I'll die for you. At his worst, he's denying Jesus in front of a fire in front of a child or, you know, a, a little teenage girl. Uh, you know what I mean? At his best, he's, you know what I mean? He's like, you are the son of God. You know, and at his worst, he's chopping off a servant's ear. You know what I mean? So like you see him at his best, you see him at his worst. And that's where the Lord sees us in all of that, right? So. I believe that there can be victory in failure. Failure is one of the most challenging things in life to face, I believe. I believe there's some people who, they face failure, and then they don't ever go past that. Yeah. Right? There's some people, after they've had that major failure, that was like, the, the turning, that was like the, the block of their life, and then they never got past that failure. Failure is one of the most challenging things to face in life. Well, because there's a few things that we have to face with failure. Number one, the thing that we face is ourselves. And I think a lot of times maybe we have a hard time looking at ourselves, like, like really looking at yourself. Not like looking at the mirror, like combing your hair, like, you know what I mean, and brushing your teeth and be like, you look good. Not that type of looking at yourself. I'm taking a, taking a good look at, at who you really are. And so sometimes failure is, is the most challenging thing because you have to look at yourself in the mirror and you have to see that you screwed up. Because a lot of times we have high expectations of ourselves, right? Or maybe we think highly of ourselves. Think about this. Most of us in our life, we are the hero of our own story, right? Nobody makes themselves the villain of their own story. Have you ever had two kids tell their side of the story? None of them said, yep, I did it. I'm, I messed up. No, they're always like, no, they did it. They, why? They're making themselves the hero. Because there's this, there's this innate nature inside of us where we want to be the hero of our story, right? We can do no wrong. And, 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 we don't, and so, so when we fail, and then we have to take a good look at that person in the mirror, sometimes that's difficult because you don't like who you see. And some people will see that, and then they'll, they'll, they'll get stuck there. 
And well, I, I failed, I made, I made this horrible mistake and I can't ever get past that. And they get stuck in life there. Failure can be one of the most challenging things to face because maybe it's not the person in the mirror that's, cha- that's difficult. Maybe facing the person we failed. Who? You failed somebody and then you have to face them in the mirror. Or you have, excuse me, you have to face them, you know, face to face. Like you gotta, you gotta, you gotta confront them with your failure. That can be challenging. You failed, you failed a person. And then you got to go before him and say, man, I failed you. That's hard. And I put God in asterisk because there's times where people fail God and they have a hard time forgiving themselves. You like blew it big time. You screwed up majorly. And then you got to come before God again and say, huh. I love the fact that we see God in his great mercy again and again. How many times? Uh, when, when Peter said, if, a, if somebody sins against me, I should forgive them seven times or seven times seven, right? And Jesus said, no, like 77 times, seven, like 700 million times, right? I mean, it's like, it basically means like an unending number because we will sin against people, right? We're going to fail. We're going to fail against them. And then one of the, and then this is, this is the difficult one right here. Not only do you got to face yourself, not only do you got to face the person we fail, but sometimes you got to face that fear. You got to face that fear of failure. Because maybe you failed, maybe you fall, maybe, maybe you make a big mistake, maybe, maybe your failure, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's uh, trickled through your family. And then after that failure, you're like, now your life is tipping toe, you're like on tiptoe eggshell, you're like, you don't want to do anything wrong because you're afraid of failing again. What if I make a big mistake? Again, failure, I think, is one of the most life's challenging things to face because we got to face ourselves. You got to look at yourself and say, I made a mistake. I failed. I'm not as good as I thought I was. <laughs> Ooh. I'm not as good as people thought I was. I don't know if that's right English, but it's good preaching. <laughs> you got to face the person you failed. I failed my spouse. I failed my child. I failed. I mean, come on, right? And then you got to fa- face that fear of failure because you failed and now you don't want to f- fall again because of how painful it is. So you got to face that. And fear of failure is a real thing. And there are people that their whole life is bottlenecked. They can't move because of f- being afraid to fail. Some people won't even step out of their comfort zone because they're afraid they're going to fail. Praise God for Peter, right? Again, this man, let's go back to him. Everybody else is on the boat. Jesus is walking on water. He said, Lord, may I come to you? He said, come. What did he do? He stepped out of the boat. Did he dance his way over to Jesus? No. He said he looked at the the waves, the water, and he fell. Say failure. failure. And I love Jesus didn't condemn him. What did Jesus do? Picked him up, got him back on the boat. <laughs> Jesus didn't say, nice try, Peter. <laughs> no, he didn't do that. Right? <laughs> You don't see in scripture, you don't see the disciples be like, no. I bet you after they saw the first two steps that he had on the water, they were probably amazed that he would do something like that. He wasn't afraid to step out of the boat. We got we, we to gotta not be afraid to step out of the boat. Amen? Maybe our failure is or was, I want to do it. And so it's like, I know better, right? Like, I know I shouldn't be doing this, but I'm doing it anyway. And that's f- failure. Maybe your failure is, I didn't know what I was doing. Have you ever offended somebody and not know you offended them? Yeah. <laughs> Let's get a poll in here. How many people have ever offended somebody? Raise your hand. Have you ever offended somebody? Okay, here. How many people purposely offended them? Like you on purpose, you're like, I'm going to say this because I know it's going to slap you right in the face. Like <laughs> nobody, right? If you're a true friend... <laughs> Jeremy, if, if, <laughs> right, if you're a true friend, right, you, you're not, you didn't purposely say what you said or did what you did to offend them or hurt their feelings, that was a moment of failure, right, moment of weakness, you failed, right, maybe you failed because you wanted to do it, maybe you failed because you didn't know what you was doing, even Jesus said this, check this out, this is so powerful, Jesus on the cross says, Lord, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. There's times you fail and you don't even know you're doing it, right? 
You're offending people. You don't even know you're offending them. You know, this is so interesting to me. It's, you know, uh, the, uh, the scripture says we who touch will be judged more strictly. And, and I believe the Lord has given uh, my wife and I a level of discernment. And the, the, the beautiful thing about discernment is you know stuff you shouldn't know and you, and you know even though they didn't tell you. For example, there's been a handful of times in my life and in ministry where I've walked in the room and I saw someone and they saw me and they didn't even say anything. I looked at them immediately and said they're offended at me. I didn't even do anything, right? Like, like, like the usually like, right? That's what you're like. It's like what? You failed. You, you did something that you did not know that you did, right? It was maybe, it was something that they expected I was supposed to do that I didn't do. Ooh. How many of us get offended at people when we expect them to, to meet our requ requirements and they don't? Whew. I'm going to go ahead. We're going to just lay this flat now, right? I am not going to meet your expectations. <laughs> Let's just put it all out there, okay? I'm flawed. I'm a man, okay? I make a lot of mistakes. I'm weak, and I'm going to miss it. There's, there's numerous times where I have failed miserably in ministry. I failed, mi mi failed miserably, and man, I felt it. There's times where I failed so hard I cried because I miss it. I make mistakes. How often have you ever failed somebody because there was expectation on you that you didn't know that you were supposed to meet? Right? I mean, there's things that you should expect, right? Right? There's some things that, that's expectation, right? Like you expect your spouse not to cheat on you, right? You stood eye to eye. I mean, that's an expectation. But there's things where there are expectations. That's what we talked about, right? And failure was that what the expectation? There are times in our life where somebody would put an expectation on you or you put an expectation on them and they don't meet that or you don't meet that and then there's offense. Hey, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't realize that you expected me to be a, super, a superhero. I'm not, okay? Jesus is my superman. <laughs> Maybe it was something, maybe your failure is because it was something that you knew you should have done. You knew better, like you, you wanted to do it even though you shouldn't have done it and you knew better. Maybe it was because of you failed because you didn't know it was better. Or maybe it was just an oops moment, like you had an oops, I screwed up, I failed. How many of us have ever had like one of those like you knew right away, like uh-oh, <laughs> my bad, right? Like, like woohoo, like uh-oh, you messed up. Just a few weeks ago, I did that right here in front of you guys. Like, my wife was all like, man, this man of God and all this other stuff, and he's so all this other stuff. And I came up, and I was like, yeah, she's a lot of work. I mean, boom, bam, failure moment, right? <laughs> I, like, totally failed, right? That was a husband failure moment, right? I mean, I could have been like, thanks, babe, you're the best, got you, boo. No, but I was like, no, she's a lot of <laughs> failure, right, in front of everybody, so I publicly apologize in front of everybody for that moment of failure. Yeah, that's, yeah, so right? <laughs> that was like an oops moment. Like as soon as it came out of my mouth, you know, I said I was just trying to be silly and joking. But as soon as it came out of my mouth, I was like, oops, nope, that was wrong. My bad, whoop. It was like, I wish I could have like, like, I probably should go back and watch. I wonder if I did like one of those. You know when you notice and your eyes go like, like, oh, like, oh man, I screwed up. I made a mistake. Let's get into the scripture. Psalm 73, verse 26. I love this. It says, my flesh. Come on. Let me get there right there. My flesh and my heart may fail. <laughs> How many people have failed in their own strength? You failed in your flesh. You failed in your own abilities, right? You failed in your own person. My heart, my flesh. And I like it says my, my flesh and my heart. I look at it as two different things. I look at like flesh, like maybe... You know what I mean? Like I said, you, you failed maybe in your own strength. And then your heart, I look at that, like maybe you failed in your emotions. You know, maybe you, emotionally you failed. Maybe you put your emotion into a relationship and, and it just crumbled and it, and it failed. You gave it your all. Or maybe you didn't give it your all and it crumbled and failed, right? My heart, my flesh and my heart may fail. They're going to fail. Say this, say, I'm going to fail. It's hard to swallow, isn't it? <laughs> and I just felt that as soon as we said it, I was like, I don't want to say that. Because it's this whole thing of, and I'm going to get to this, it's, so, it's a beautiful thing. Because if you can embrace, if you can embrace, if you can embrace, oh my gosh, Lord Jesus. Lord 
Lord, how do we get back to the what we're supposed to talk about? <laughs> if you can embrace grace, and we're going to get into that. You're going to, there's, there's, there's a, a huge thing as followers of Christ. You, we, we're, you're, you're not, if you can just, that's what I'm saying, you know, I will fail. If you just know that, it, I think it kind of, kind of breaks the, this perfectionism type of thing that we have, that we have to be perfect in our own, in our own heart and mind. Seriously, because there's this striving that happens. Come on, I'm preaching now. There's a striving that happens inside of us because we're Christians, because we are followers of Christ, that we're expected not to ever make mistakes or mess up. And you're going to fail. You're going to get another speeding ticket, hopefully not this week. Right? Right? You're going to get into a car accident. Right? You're going to call somebody a name you shouldn't. You're going to get an attitude with somebody you shouldn't have. You're going to, you're going to fail. Right? Because none of us are perfect. I'm not talking about like huge, major crash and burn, you know, like, you know, you blow your oil. I'm talking about just, I mean, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to fail. As we says, my heart and my flesh may fail. Like it's going to happen. But God, come on. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. So there's this part of understanding failure and knowing that we're going to make mistakes and knowing that we're flawed and knowing that we're not perfect and that we're going to grab a hold of the Lord and he's going to be our strength. How many times have we failed in our own strength and our own flesh? Too many to count. Guaranteed. Or here's something else. Maybe you've experienced, man, this is something that God has been, I've been chewing this for a while and I hope I word this right. Okay. You may have had an, you may have experienced victory in an area of your life. Well, hold on back to it. Maybe you've experienced victory in an area of your life and then you fall in that area just because you've experienced victory doesn't mean that you will automatically always have victory in that area. For example, you know, if you, um, we, we call it uh, in society relapse, right? That's what they call it, right? Like maybe you've stayed away from drugs for like five years, right? And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, things just happen, things just happen, things just happen, and you, you give into that again, right? Sometimes that failure is a one-time thing. Sometimes that failure can spiral down to going back into that lifestyle again. I've seen that. I've seen where people have had major victory for years. But the scripture says this, and this is where we got to be aware. The scripture says that the devil waited for an opportune time, meaning that he's got all, he's been doing this for eons. He has all the time in the world. If he can call a third of the angels who are in the very presence of God to follow him, yeah. he's just waiting. Well. Right? It says Jesus, that, that Jesus was being tempted by the devil and then he left him for, and waited for another opportune time, meaning he was going to sit back and just watch. And we saw when Jesus was being weak, he's going to go after him again. So the enemy's just waiting for that time of weakness. And so just because you've experienced victory in an area of your life doesn't mean that that's always going to be there. and doesn't mean that it's automatic victory there forever. You have to continue to fight for that victory. I've seen, I've seen where people, you know, have, um, again, I mean, there's just, so many, there's just so many illustrations. I don't want to get into uh, a lot of them. But, but where people have experienced true, amazing victory, and then 10 years down the line, maybe they stumble. They just fall back into that area again. It happens. Okay. So, so we got a few things we're going to talk about. Number one is failure is okay if we can get back up. Number one, failure is okay if we get back up. It's not okay if you stay defeated. Where failure is not okay is when you stay defeated. When you got knocked down and that was the last round. And you chose to say, okay, I, I cannot win in this area of my life. I'm going to just, I'm not going to fight anymore. I'm just going to give in. Failure is okay if we, when we get back up. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16 says this. I love this. For the righteous falls seven times and rises again. There's a beautiful adjective in that verse that I think a lot of times we neglect. It says the righteous, meaning a person that's in right standing with God, right? Not an unbeliever, right? Not a sinner. A righteous person falls 
Can you have, can that, can you just like breathe just a little bit of relief right there? Like, huh, but gets back up, right? Rises again. That's the key. The key is when you make a mistake, but then you got to face yourself. You got to face, you got to face your failure. You got to face fear of failure. You got to face the person you failed. You got to, so, so getting back up isn't easy. It may take all the strength you have for you to get back up. You may have fallen so hard, the devil's beat you up so badly that it's easier to quit and throw in the towel. Do you know that? It is easier. I'm going to say this again. It is easier to quit. Just quit. Throw in the towel. Give up. And the devil's right there wanting you to quit. Man, how many times have you failed miserably and, and it's right there? And just give up. Quit. It's not worth it. Don't fight. Because it's... It's so hard to get back up. A righteous man, I love that. A righteous person, a righteous, the righteous falls seven times. I love that it says seven times. Because it means they could have this, like I said, what did I talk about? Maybe it's an area in their life they just keep struggling with. What was an area that David struggled with? Man, it's, he had a lot of struggles, right? Struggled with adultery, struggled with pride, struggled with all kinds of stuff, right? What was the difference between David's sin and Saul's sin? Right, yeah. David got back up. David humbled himself and repented. Saul was like, uh, let me look good in front of everybody, you know. <laughs> I screwed up, but pat me on my back in front of everybody. Right? David was like, man, I'm screwed up. I messed up. I falled. And he got back up. And he wrote, right, we believe that the Psalm 51 is after his, his failed, uh, his failure with Belsheba and losing his son and all that other stuff. Where he's like, my sin, my iniquity, my transgression, you know. Failure is okay if we get back up. Righteous fall seven times. The question is, is are we willing to grow in our failures? Do you know this? Failure is a teacher. Think of this. Our best lessons are learned when we mess up. Failure is a great teacher. Anyone here ever fail an exam? And then what happened? You studied, and maybe you had a, another attempt to take it again. You did what? You studied harder the second time to take it again. Because failure was a good teacher. Failure showed you where you were weak at. Whew. Failure shows us our weakness. And I believe failure wants to teach us a few things. Failure wants to teach us grace. Failure wants to teach us mercy. And that beautiful thing, failure wants to teach us humility. I believe the Lord allows failure just so that we can walk humbly before him. What happens if we start thinking too highly of ourselves? Cocky and arrogant. Who likes to be around those people, right? Do you know those peacock people? They're like, do you know those people? Right? With their chest out. I mean, they're like, no one is as good as them. No family is as good as them. They're, you know what I mean? They're like never wrong, right? You can't win an argument with them. Those are the best friends, right? <laughs> no. Humility. Humility is ugly. Because sometimes humility means eating humble pie. But the Lord desires it. He actually says that he opposes the proud, but he gives what? Grace to the humble. And a lot of times how you become humble is by a fall. <laughs> I love this. Check this out. The scripture says this. It says, be careful lest you fall, fall or stumble. Right? Be careful lest you fall. You start thinking more highly than you ought. Be careful lest you fall. Okay? So friends, uh, okay, I'll share. I will share it. I was thinking whether I wanted to share this or not. We got some time. So I'm going uh, to backtrack back to 1989. No, not 1989. I'm going to backtrack back to, to 2000. 18, 2018, is that what it is? I know, so long ago. It's crazy. Like, think of this. I look at 2000s, I'm like, that was like not very long ago, but that was like 21 years ago. Yeah. Isn't that nuts? Uh, right, Y2K. Right. Okay. Um, so, 20, so, so my wife and I in 2006, 2006, yeah, uh, we, uh, her and I were, uh, you know, we had a, a thriving uh, youth ministry um, we, we were only doing it for a few years. 
Um, I mean, we're busing kids from the pr- neighborhoods and projects and just loving on people. And then our pastor had this amazing idea to, to take the church that was in South Toledo and relocate the church to Oregon and then and have my wife and I start a, br- a brand new church in that facility. And so that's, we were like, you know, how was that? First, I was like, no, like, that doesn't sound like a good idea. That sounds like a terrible idea. And then the Lord said, either you do it or someone else will. And I said, okay, Lord, he might send me, right? Because I was like, I'm like 26. I'm like too young. You know, I had all the, all the excuses. I'm too young. I can't pastor church. I'm not experienced enough. I don't blah, 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 blah. Right? We always have all that. We always have all that. Anytime the Lord calls us to step outside of our comfort zone and to step up, we always have excuses, right? Even Moses had excuses. We just do. It's just it's part of it, right? <laughs> Gideon is like, oh, Lord, you're, cut. you're the wrong one. Let me put a few fleeces out there. So I had some excuses. The Lord dealt with me. I did it. You know, we, we planted the church. So um, when we did that, we realized, hey, we can do this. This is cool. So years go by, and then the Lord put it on our heart to plan again. So 2007, no, 2016 is when my, well, is when my wife and I, we started uh, praying and, and, and fasting and seeing what would that look like if we were to plant another church. And then through all of that, 2017, I think it's January of 2017, we, we started meeting together at the event center, and then we launched a church that Easter. So it's like we started meeting with people, and that's like you don't do that. Like if you know anything about church planning, church planning boot camp, you don't just like start meeting with people and then launch a church immediately. They say you should be, you know, building, you know, relationships and people for at least a year before doing anything. But my wife and I were like, we know what we're doing. We've done this before. Boom, bam, bing, you know, and... Um, so we did, we launched it and we started meeting in the school. Um, the, they were helping us financially. We, we planted through the assemblies of God. They started helping us financially, which able to buy, you know, equipment, video, audio, all that other stuff. And, um, so we did, we did it in faith, you know, we stepped out of, of the boat. Um, we stepped, I mean, financially, we weren't in a, pl- not really in a place to do that. We didn't really have, you know what I mean? The leadership, we're just like, you know, kind of like Peter stepping out of the boat because when the Lord Puts, you know, when he tells you to do something, you got to do it. So, uh, so we did, so we, so we started doing that 20, so that was 2017, 2018. Are you guys with me? Can I tell the story? Can I be transparent? Because I'm like years over it now. I'm like, we're good now. So <laughs> 20, I think people need to see, you know, I mean, we're, we're, we met, you know, we're here too. 2018, uh, July of 2018, our, our uh, office manager tells us, we have no money. The church has no money. Like we have nothing. Like we're, we've spent through everything. We have nothing left. Like we can't pay bills. We can't do anything. And we were like, oh God, what do we do? <laughs> you know, like if you know any, I mean, our, our South Seattle campus is not self-sufficient. I mean, we raise money. We do fundraisers, outside support, all this other stuff. And then we planted a church from an inner city church, right? They don't do that, right? Usually you have a, a thriving church that has funds and you send a church from that. You don't have an inner city urban church and then you plant a church out in the sticks, right? The, 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 I mean, I mean, all of even our, uh, the, uh, I mean, they were bragging about that stuff down in Columbus. They were like this inner city. Ch-. I mean, you know, so maybe I got a little cocky with it. Cause I'm like, Oh, we're sweet. Like we're doing something that's not heard of. Oh, like, like, cause they're like, like, who does this? Um, so I'm just being transparent. So, 2018, we ran out of money. We're like, there's nothing. We, we can't pay bills. We can't do anything. So we had an emergency meeting with like all of our leaders. I think there was probably like 30 or 40 leaders. And we met at our South Seattle campus and we had a big circle and we just were transparent. We're like, look, this is where we're at. Like, we don't know, how, we don't know what to do here. We've never been in a place like this. Um, we, we have no money. We don't know what to do. So uh, all of our leaders were like, um, we're going to figure this out. We'll, we'll get through this together. Like it was so encouraging, like, you know, praying and, and believing we're going to believe God that he's going to do something. And, and so, so we went through like our budget, we cut, we cut everything we could cut. You know, we, we cut salaries, we cut missionaries, we cut expenses. I mean, we went through, we just, everything that we could think of where we could any kind of cut whatsoever, where we, we made cuts, cut, 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 cut. And uh, that's when we moved from the school into the event center, because that in itself was like saving us like 3,500. And that's when we started meeting in the event center. So, like I said, July of 2018, all of our leaders, South Seattle leaders, Waterville leaders, all of them like, we got you. We got this. Let's go. We can do this. We got you. We're going to do this. Then from July 2018 till December 2018, 
all of our majority of our leaders left. <laughs> Seriously. Children's pastor, youth pastor, worship leader. I mean, I mean, uh, so, I mean, all, I mean, all of our major leaders who we were, who we were leaning on, they jumped ship. And nothing against them. You know, they just, it just, it is what it is, right? They're like, this boat's sinking, I'm off, <laughs> right? I mean, how many people jumped off, jumped, jumped off the Titanic like this bad boy's going down and we're not going down with it. So, 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 so my wife, like I said, we're human. We're, we make mistakes. I think I got enough time to continue telling the story. So 2018, so 2019, we're coming into 2019 and we're like, we're like barely making it financially left. You know, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm leading worship again. My wife is, you know, her and I are, you know what I mean? And I'm telling you, we got the most discouraged in ministry we ever got. We're like, are we doing this thing wrong? We, her and I were at a place where we're like, I think God is done with us. You know, we're like, we, I think God's done. Like, there's like no fruit, like what we're doing, we're failing the thing. Maybe it's time to hand this over to someone else. And her and I, I'm going to say it was probably maybe February. Yeah, it was January, February. We actually put a fleece out to the Lord. We say, Lord, if nothing changes in a year, that's you showing us that, that it's time for someone else. We're going to hand this over because we've, we don't know what we're doing anymore. Um, and seriously, like, seriously, like, like her and I, I remember we, had, we were sitting across from each other. We we're in a restaurant. And, and the, that was the conversation was, if nothing changes in a year, we're done. Like, we, we don't know what to do. So we put out all of these ideas of what we could do. I'm like, you know, maybe I'll just, maybe, maybe, maybe I need to take a sabbatical. I'll just quit ministry. I'll go hide in a big church somewhere. <laughs> you know, I still love Jesus. I'm still going to do, you know what I mean? But, but this whole pastor leader thing, just maybe I'm just failing at this. I just don't know what I'm doing. You know, one of the thoughts were, you know, we could put our resume out and go find a ministry position. Somewhere. I mean, so we like her and I, we actually, we actually tallied this list of all these different things we had. We actually had people that were wanting to hire us on as, as they they were like, they were coming at, isn't that funny how that works? Like you're like right in the middle of discouragement. And then, and then all of a sudden, like all of these temptations of like, we're like, we could go over and we could go and we could be staff pastors at this church, actually make some decent money. Uh, you know what I mean? And just like hide and be comfortable and safe. You know what I mean? I mean, like I said, we had, none of you guys know this stuff, right? Did anybody here know all this stuff? No, because we was hiding my, that's what my kids, my kids knew it all. Right? So, so 2019, her and I was the whole year, you know what I mean? And we're coming up here, we're serving, we're giving our best, but inside we're like, we don't know what God's doing. We don't know what we're called to do. We, we feel like, like, like I said, we, and then, so at, Towards the end of 2019, uh, we just, we became real, we, came, we became real with our board and we just sat down and we just said, look, this is where we're at and we don't know what to do. We don't know what our next move is, but we feel like we're not doing what we're supposed to do. And, you know, we have no money and everybody left, you know what I mean? So it's like, so it's like, you know what I mean? It's just like, there's nothing left. We don't know. We, so like, maybe should we hand, just hand this over? And, and I don't even know. I don't even know if I even imagine, you guys even know this. We were like, I'm going to hand over South Toledo to Earl and Renee. We're going to hand over uh, Waterville to, to Ivan and Amanda and, and her, and we're gone. Like, we're going to leave. Like, we don't know. They didn't even know. Like I said, you guys even know. I'm just telling you, these are, these are conversations that we we're having. You know, my wife and I. Yeah. 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 So, um. So my, so our, so our, uh, are you okay with this? Can I finish telling the story? Cause I know it's like a long time. So, cause I believe this is all failure and victory and all that stuff. So, so towards the end of 2018, um, our board was like, y'all need a break, like go somewhere, like go do something. Like they were like, just go away for, for a few weeks. So we were like, we've never really taken. So, so we took two weeks off, which we've never done and realized that we need to do more often. And so we just said, you know, we're just going to, you know, they're like, we're going to handle it. We'll handle everything. Everything's cool. We'll take care. You know, we've got people who can do stuff. So we took two weeks off and my wife and I, our two weeks off is, is her and I would like to like go in and like hide in like churches. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, cause, cause when you're ministering all the time to be able to sit on that end is kind of like a break. It feels good. So, uh, so like there was a few churches, her and I try to slip in the back, the one church we we're good friends with. And they're like, come sit up front. And I'm like, it was, we were just trying to like sneak in, you know what I mean? And do you know, prophetic word after prophetic word, after ministering word from the pulpit ministering was don't quit. Don't give up. We didn't tell anybody anything. 
don't quit, don't give up, don't quit, don't give up, don't quit, don't quit. I mean, everywhere, I was just hearing this word, don't quit, don't give up, don't quit. I'm like, okay, God, I get it. So then at the beginning of 2020, we went to a minister's retreat. No joke, this was a prophetic word. I was weeping. It was like, it was like, you know, when they give like one of those words from the thing and like you feel it and it's like heavy. It was one of those words and you know what it was? Don't quit and don't give up. So after all of that, my wife and I was like, okay, God, you are obviously telling us not to quit. Don't give up. We're going to just keep moving forward. We don't know what it looks like, but we're going to trust you anyways. So check this out. Backtrack just a moment. This was, so in our rest, when we went on a vacation, I, we get a call from my, our Aunt Margaret talking about this facility right here. Because when we were set, when we were at, uh, when we were at the other facilities, it was tear down, set up, tear down, set up. And in, and the thing with, with the Waterville Event Center, and it's a great facility, but it just wasn't adequate for our needs, for like for our kids' space. And afterwards, like, you know how like afterwards, like our kids can run around here and have a good time and we're talking and stuff. You can do that there. Cause like we're, ha we're ending service and people are walking in with like food and like, cause it was a, it was an event center. They, they rented out that the space right after us. So there were no, there really wasn't any of that time for camaraderie and just that little bit of fellowship that we get before and after service. So it was like, we were resting you know, God was speaking to us. This facility opened up. And not only did it open up, but it was like, not only is this facility available, but, but we've got like five grand that we're going to like, like we're going to to start for the first like month's rent. Because I think it was down to pay, down deposit and first month's rent was like five grand. And so how God just like, he just started showing you, okay, you don't give up, don't quit. I'm going to just show you something. And so this, this property for us was a blessing. It was almost like a rest because we're not coming in, setting up and tear down and chairs and all that other fun, all that other jazz. 2020, the beginning of 2020, Lord gave that, solidified that. We're like, okay, God, we know you called us to do that. And then the pandemic hits, <laughs> right? <laughs> so it's like, but this is what's crazy. We actually went into the pandemic, pandemic with hope. We went into the pandemic knowing that God was with us. So we're like, okay, we faced it. So it was funny. So we, that's why I told people, I said 2019 was our 2020. Because that whole year we were battling, we didn't know what we were going to do. 2020 hits and everybody else is battling and they're all, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know what to do in life. And we're like, Jesus has us, we're good. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like it's so obviously 2020, and check this out. So we didn't give up, we didn't quit. 2020 happens. Financially, our church did the best it ever did, ever, financially. It was insane. We're like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> right, right. To the point, to the point where we were able to hire on Earl as our full-time campus pastor for, you know, I mean, to, enough to put, to add a salary, a full-time salary to our expenses. Hired on Pastor Earl. To now, this is what's crazy. Financially, our church is doing better this year than they were even yet last year. So... Failure is okay if we don't give up, right? Don't give up. So personal testimony of growth and grace and humility. And so Hebrews chapter 12, verse, uh, I got a few scriptures here. Hebrews chapter 12, verse one says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with, this is the word friends, perseverance. That's that stick to itiveness is the don't giving up. It's the not quitting the, the race that's marked out for us. So number one, friends, failure is okay. If we get back up and then number two, friends, failure can grow us closer to the Lord. Failure can grow us closer to the Lord. You know, in 2019, my wife and I, we were leaning into the Lord more than we've done in a long time. Because we're like, Lord, what are, you, what are you doing? Where are we at? Called us to hold on tighter, right? Failure can grow us closer to God. Think about this. There, so my life, me living for Christ, is because of the product of a failed marriage. My parents got a divorce. My mom started going to church. My mom drugged me to church. <laughs> failure drew my mom closer to God. Failure, well, failed marriage drew me closer to God. If you, if you heard anything about Pastor Albert and his testimony, he was in prison for like, he was, he was uh, supposed to serve like 16 years. He ended up serving like 12 or 14 years. And that, and, and that life failure drew him closer to God. So failure can actually draw us closer to God. For instance, how many of us in here came to Christ because of a broken situation? There was a broken situation in your life. 
You had no other place to turn. You had no other where to go. And so you're like, okay, God, if you're real, okay, God, if you're listening, okay, God, if you're with me. And it actually, your broken situation actually drew you into a closer relationship with God. Because friends, a crisis is a friend of the church. Now, no one likes to go through it, right? We don't, but it is, it's a friend of the church. Crisis is what draws. So if we as a, as a body of Christ, you know, if we can do well in crisis, if we can do well in pandemics, Right? Crisis is the front church. Luke chapter, I'm going to read this and then we'll end. Luke chapter 7, verse 38 through 48. We'll end with this. This is Jesus here. He's with a bunch of Pharisees. In verse 38. Okay? There's this woman. She's, she comes up to Jesus. It says, Then she knelt before him at his feet, weeping. Her tears fell on his feet. She wiped them off with her hair. Then she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. When the Pharisees who had invited him saw this, said to himself, if this man were a prophet, and isn't it just amazing how they're always, if, that's how the devil does. If you really were a man of God, if you really were a woman of God, if you really are a Christian, the devil, just like that. If this man really were a prophet, he would have known what kind of woman she is touching him. She is a sinner. Because he wasn't a sinner, obviously. <laughs> Verse 40. Yeah, he thought he wasn't. Then Jesus answered his thoughts. <laughs> My gosh. <gasps> That's fire right there, bro. That's fire. Jesus answered his thoughts. Have you ever had the Lord answer your thoughts? <laughs> Jesus answered us all. Simon, he said to the Pharisee, I have something to say to you. <laughs> oh, man. Go ahead, teacher, Simon replied. Then Jesus told him a story. A man loaded money to two people, 500 pieces of silver to one and 50 pieces to the other, but neither of them could repay him. So he kindly forgave them both, canceling their debts. Who do you suppose loved him more after that? Verse 43. Simon answered, I suppose the one for whom he canceled the larger debt. That's right, Jesus said. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, look at this woman kneeling here. When I entered your home, you didn't offer me water to wash the dust from my feet, but she has washed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You didn't greet me with a kiss. From the time that I first came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You neglected the courtesy of olive oil to anoint my head, but she has anointed my feet with rare perfume. This is it, friends, right here. I tell you. Her sins, and they are many, have been forgiven. So she has shown much love. But a person who is forgiven little shows only little love. Then Jesus said to the woman, your sins are forgiven. Right there. What failure can grow us closer to the Lord? Her sins, which are many. Say failure. Her failure drew her to the feet of Christ. So good. So good. Her sins are many. Drew her to the Lord. Friends, maybe your failure is staying pure as a man. Maybe it's staying pure as a person or a single person. Maybe your failure is you're still trying to please people instead of please the Lord. Maybe uh, your failure is you just can't pick yourself up. Maybe that's your failure. Your failure is, is you've fallen and you can't get up. Remember that commercial back in the 80s? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Oh, man, uh, we are all ruined if you saw that commercial. Help! I've fallen, and I can't get up. But isn't that, isn't, isn't that an, an amazing analogy of crying out to the Lord when we fall? Lord, I've fallen. Because, I mean, how many times have you fallen you can't get up in your own strength? Let the Lord pick you up, right? Just like he picked up Peter out of the water, okay? Two more things, and we'll end right here. Number one, friends. We all fail at who we're supposed to be. I heard that one time. I was watching a superhero movie, and I saw that quote, and I was like, that's one of the most amazing things I've ever heard on TV. Yeah. We all fail at who we're supposed to be. Because in your mind and in your heart, you have this person that you are trying to strive towards. Right? Right? All of us do, right? I do. You probably do. I'm sure you do. There's this person in your mind who you think you should be. 
Are you that person? Probably not. But do you think you should be there? Right? And so maybe, 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 you know, there's a, you know, maybe spiritually you think you should be at this place and you're, you're making a mistake. Maybe emotionally you're this place. You know, maybe, you know, physically, I don't know what it is. We all fail at who we're supposed to be, right? We're supposed to be kind, right? How many fail in that? In kindness. You're supposed to be loving, right? You're supposed to be. How many people are loving all the time? You're supposed to walk in joy and peace. How many people have peace 100% of the time? So we all fail, right? We're supposed to be men and women of God who walk in peace, joy, right? Love, right. kindness, goodness. We all fail. We all fail at who we're supposed to be, okay? The thing is, is we don't need to be a better you. We need to be a deader you. <laughs> Put that up there. That's from Joe Liggett. You guys remember Joe Liggett? He's preached a few times here. He preached that. I was like, that's like one of the best quotes I've ever heard you say. He said, you don't have to be a better you. You just need to be a deader you. When you die to yourself, you know, those books, you know, be a better you, be more successful. True success of you is you dying to yourself, you decreasing and God increasing. And that's what this whole thing of failure is. Failure is realizing that, you're, that you are flawed. You make mistakes. You fail. You know what I mean? And so you lean into the Lord. You lean into Christ. You let him be the, your strength. You let him, you know, be your sustenance. And, and then if you can actually embrace your weakness, God's strength would be made perfect in your life. Because what did he tell Paul? He said, my strength is made perfect in weakness, right? Let's pray today. Father, we just come before you in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for your word. God, we thank you that we see men and women who, God, who failed. God, we see men and women who loved you and had great efforts and did great exploits and who did miraculous things and supernatural feats and yet would still fall short. And thank you for your loving embrace. Thank you that you would look at Peter and all of his failures and say the Lord had said, and, he, and how he would look at him with his loving eyes and the Lord would say to Peter, the enemy would wish to sift you like wheat, but I've stood in the gap for you. And Lord, thank you that you stand in the gap for us. And Lord, I thank you that Father, our life is not exempt from failure. God, our life is not exempt from that. And maybe we've made major failures in the past. Maybe there's some failures in our past that we're still having a hard time letting go of. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that, God, you would release grace in this place for us to forgive ourselves and, and not to hold on to that failure and that bitterness. The name of Jesus. Forgive yourself. <laughs> and grab a hold of the grace that the Lord has of forgiveness for you. In the name of Jesus, please. You can't move on. If you're still, life is stuck at that place of failure, friends. Jesus. We love you, God. Thank you, God. And if there is an area in your life where you are just, you're, you're finding yourself failing over and over and over again, I believe a few things. Number one, I believe that you need to confess that before the Lord. And um, I believe you should confess that to someone else. Find a prayer partner. Find someone who can lift you up. Find a Barnabas. Find an encourager. Find someone you can do life with. Find someone you can share your struggles with. That's how you walk in victory and failure. Father, we just, I pray right now, God, if we, God, if there's anyone in here that needs a friend, I pray that you just lead and guide them to a good person who could be a part of their life that they can be close with and uh, vulnerable around and safe and share, <laughs> God, the secrets of their heart where they're failing. And Lord, that, that they can be lifted up. I just pray that, God, I believe that, God, it is, uh, there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. I believe that's a blessing and a gift from the Lord. God, I just pray for friendships to continue to develop in vision ministries. Beautiful, deep, loving relationships, God. In the name of Jesus. And God, give us the grace to look at ourselves in the mirror. Give us the grace to look at the person that we failed. And give us the grace to not be afraid of failure again. In the name of Jesus. 
I pray that everybody would learn victory in our shortcomings. In Jesus' mighty name, and all of God's people say, amen. Waiting for it? Of course you are. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and may he give you peace in Jesus' name. God bless you, friends. Thanks for joining with us today.